I recently went on a date with a guy from my school who I met on a dating app. He seemed super sweet and charming over text, so I agreed to go on a date with him, especially after two friends told me they knew him from class where he was a generally funny guy. We go to a small, pretty prestigious university, which also made me sure that he would be normal. He was supposed to meet me at 6 to go on a picnic, but ended up picking me up at 8.30. He drove me to his apartment, and although uncomfortable, I agreed to go in because of everything I already knew about him. The apartment was only lit with one candle and a small glowing light on the floor, which didn't add much. It was a multiple bedroom apartment that he lived in alone, which made it even more odd. We talked and ate some food, and he seemed nervous and uneasy for most of it. He suddenly switched the conversation to our deepest, darkest secrets and asked if I ever seriously thought about killing anyone. After I said no, he made up a story about being in the Navy and having to bomb a ship and killing five people. When I was unsure how to respond, he sort of just passed it off as a joke and said that he had a serious thought of killing someone else, his ex, current boyfriend. I was extremely uncomfortable at this point and wanted to leave and he agreed to drive me home. Before we left, he said he wanted to show something to me and pulled out a rifle that he pointed in my direction. When I got startled, he remained eerily calm and said that he got it for hunting, but couldn't think of ever killing an animal. We left, and I got back to my friend's place safely. Everyone I've told has been flabbergasted about how the date went, and I can't shake the feeling that something is off about him and it's creeping me out. Any thoughts on this would be appreciated. A bunch of years ago, I matched with this guy on Tinder. I was a freshman in college and just got out of a relationship, having fun. I matched with this guy, male, 24. We can call him D. He was a little odd, but we had similar interests and went to the same school, so I thought, why not? The red flag started rolling in immediately when I said that I would go on a date with him. Of course, the fact that he was much older isn't lost on me as an initial red flag. He tells me he's not in town, but that he'll leave his grandmother's funeral early and come pick me up. He was a minimum five hours away, and at this time I didn't have a car, so he said he would pick me up. D ended up driving all the way back to pick me up. When he picked me up, he was in sweatpants, a wife beater, and flip-flops, which struck me as odd because he said he was coming from a funeral. We hadn't really made plans, just to get a bite to eat and hang out. Since he had been out of town, he asked if it was okay if we stopped to pick up his dog. He had left his dog with a friend. I like dogs, so I was like, no problem. It was dark and we pull up to an apartment complex and he leaves me in the car and comes back with a golden retriever that's a bit older. The dog immediately starts growling at me, which had never happened to me before, so I started feeling a little weird. Because we have his dog, he wanted to drop him off at his house. This feels logical to me, and I'm anxious to get the growling dog away from me. When we pull up to Dee's house, he asks me if I want to come in, and I do. So we walk in and I immediately knew it was the wrong choice. The house was trashed, there was trash everywhere, trash bags full along the front entry, trash on the couch, and just general crap everywhere. D let me know that he has a roommate, but his roommate isn't home. After brushing the trash off the couch, he asked me if I wanted to sit down and play chess. I had expressed that I was interested in learning, and he seemed more than happy to help me learn. This too was a mistake. D begins explaining the game to me, and it isn't fun first date explaining. He had gotten very serious and is showing me each piece while telling me what it is, what it does, and how it moves. D then begins questioning me over each piece, which I got most wrong. Every time I get one wrong, he yells the correct answer and tells me to try again. He got more and more frustrated and it made me very uncomfortable. So I suggested we pause chess and do something else. D suggests watching a movie, which is fine with me. The idea of us leaving and going to get some food, seemingly forgotten. 
He tells me that we can watch a movie in his room, and I oblige. But then he explains that he has to put sheets on the bed because he washed them before leaving for his grandma's funeral. I had assumed that we were moving into his bedroom because it may have been cleaner, but when we go in, it's not, and there's no TV in his room. He proceeds to put Iron Man 2 onto his phone to have us watch it. We watched about 10 minutes of it before things got sexual. I won't tell you strangers details, but short story short, we didn't have sex, but other things went down. I will say those things were consensual. After they occurred, I was feeling really odd about the whole situation and told him I didn't want to have sex. He was confused but didn't push it at first. He said he was fine and we watched about 5 more minutes of the movie before he said he didn't want to watch the movie anymore. He started complaining and asking me why I didn't want to have sex with him and I simply said that I wasn't in the mood anymore. He then began pressuring me to tell him exactly what it was about him that made me feel that way. At this point, we had moved from the bedroom back to the dirty living room. You might be thinking, seems like a perfect time to leave. And I thought so too, but here's where things start getting scary. As if he knows I'm thinking about leaving, he explodes and begins to scream at me. This is a six foot something man screaming in the face of a five foot nothing young girl. Of course, I internally freaked out, but I'm trying to make sure I don't piss him off even more. But I'm also not agreeing to anything. For the next 5-10 to 10 minutes, D screams at me about why I don't like him, why I don't want him, and continuously asks what's wrong with him, and to tell him. I tried to placate him the best as possible, saying the old, it's not you, it's me, and no, I don't want to leave. Again, this man was my only ride home, and I'm truthfully not sure exactly where I was. Though I did have my phone and Google Maps, I did not have Uber at the time. D finally calms down when he believes that I'm going to stay, then suggests we try playing some video games. I was in full internal freakout mode, trying to make sure I was playing the part of the interested date because I was terrified that if he felt like I wanted to leave, he would freak out again. We played this game for a while and then out of nowhere, D starts getting upset again. He started yelling about why no one likes him, why no one wants to get to know him, and why no one loves him saying that he has never had a girlfriend and all his dates have been one night stands. Again, I tried to placate him with a, I don't know, lots of girls are snooty like that. At this point, I'm saying anything and everything he wants to hear. He even starts crying about how his mother never loved him and telling me very deep dark things that his mother has said to him and treated him. After he finally calms down once more, he gets up and goes to the kitchen to fix us some drinks. Now, if you're anyone with a brain, you're thinking absolutely not, which was my exact thought at the moment. I declined multiple offers for a drink. He asked if instead of alcohol, I wanted water, and of course I declined, saying that I wasn't thirsty. I stayed in his apartment until about 1am because I was sitting there next to him, terrified to 1. Ask him to take me home. 2. Say that I would walk home. 3. Figure out how to get an Uber. I've been trying to download Uber on my phone without him noticing, but then it asked for a card information, and that was too hard to do without him noticing. So around 1am, I yawn very loud and say, Oh wow, it's 1am. My roommates are going to be worried about me. I laugh, as if my roommate would be stupid enough to worry, and that I haven't been watching the clock since he picked me up at 9pm. Then said, I'm so tired, I should get home soon. Again, I was super scared that he would freak out, but he didn't explode. He just looked at the clock and said, yeah, it's late. But I was not taking my chances, so I said, I have a great idea. If I get to bed, I'd love to have breakfast with you on campus. I was hoping my offer convinced him that I was intending on seeing him again, and it did. He seemed very happy at the prospect of it and jumped up, walking me out of his house into his car. The drive back was excruciating long. The ride was completely silent. Neither of us spoke. It was only a 10 minute drive, but I could have sworn that he slowed down every time we got to a particularly dark area or overpass. D dropped me off and I smiled and made a good show of being tired, yet excited to see him tomorrow. He offered multiple times to walk me to the door, but I declined every time and said, 
I didn't want to bother him, and I'll see him tomorrow. I walked myself to the building, and the moment I got around the corner, I sprinted so fast up the stairs and to the door before he could change his mind and follow me to my place. When I got to my dorm room, I generally felt like I just escaped a serial killer. Even writing this now makes my heart race a bit. I never met up with him, but he begged me multiple times after that to meet up with him again. He even asked to pay me $20 an hour to sit near me in the library. I declined, obviously, and only ever saw him once after the gym on campus. He didn't see me, and I left immediately. I've thought about Dee occasionally since the date, and wonder if all those girls he had one night stands with had the same experience I did. I sometimes wonder how many girls there were after me. So D, let's not meet again. I was on Grindr, a queer dating hookup app. I was talking to this guy and it was pretty casual at first. We were just chatting and he wanted me to come over and hook up. I told him that I was just in an area hanging out with a friend and waiting for another to get here. He kept pushing the idea and suddenly he got closer to me on the app from being under a mile away to under 2,000 feet away. I asked him what he was doing because he somehow got closer. He said he was just driving around. First red flag that I should have picked up on. I eventually asked him if he was driving around a graveyard and he said yes. And one thing led to another and I met him up outside of the graveyard entrance and told him it was like a two minute walk from my friend's house to the entrance. So I start walking. I get not but a few yards towards the entrance from my friend's house when a car pulls over. It's him. Skinnier than I saw him in the pictures. He immediately starts rubbing himself, asking if I want to take a ride around the block. I told him I wasn't getting into a stranger's car in a town that I'm not familiar with. Eventually, he drove off down the road. Now, I didn't think to wait until he was way down the road to head back inside, which was probably my biggest mistake. This part is speculation, but I'm sure he waited to see what house I went into. After a text conversation of him telling me that we should have done stuff in the graveyard, I told him that would be disrespectful to the dead, and he said he didn't care. Then I tried to send a message saying, I care, but the message didn't send, so I opened the app and he blocked me. Whatever, people block others all the time. I get a few more messages from other people, but tell them the same thing, that I'm at a friend's house and I can't just pop out. After that, I went to sleep on the couch in the front room. Next thing I know, I'm awake. I didn't know why. The sun wasn't shining through the curtains, so it couldn't be that early. My body usually wakes me up around 6 or 7 a.m. So I lay there for a second, and I hear a knock on the window behind and to the right of me. My first thought was someone next door was doing work on their house. They were only a few yards away after all. That was until I heard the knock again, but who's doing that on a Tuesday morning? I was immediately frightened that it was the guy from last night, but I tried to rationalize it. Maybe one of my friends got stuck outside and needed me to come and open the door. But then I heard a knock on the window from the other side of the sunroom. At this point, I'm just freaking out and my mind is racing. My first idea is to grab the phone and check the time. It was only 5 a.m., I tried calling my friend as I really didn't want to wake both of them up. The first call didn't get picked up. I decided fuck it, I'm going to peek through the window that the front door has. Mind you, there's curtains on it because those windows take up most of the door. But first, I checked the deadbolt. It was unlocked so I attempted to lock it. This was an old brass deadbolt that quite frankly, I didn't know how it worked. So I decided to peek through the window. Thankfully, no one was out there but their cat, so I let it in. After this, I said fuck it and woke up everyone. There was no more knocking. I checked on my phone and saw that there was a blank profile about 350 feet away. I then refreshed it and they were 800 feet away. After I saw this, I didn't know what to think. I frantically searched through my settings on Grindr to find out how to turn my location off. I couldn't figure it out, so I signed off the app. Now I'm upstairs relaxing with my friend, hoping not to hear another knock on the window. 
So creepy guy from Grinder, let's not meet. Trigger warning. This happened in college. At the time, I was 18 and a sophomore. I just recently gotten out of a six-year relationship and was starting to get into the dating scene. I downloaded Tinder and got to swiping. Some background. I didn't want to talk to someone who went to my university because thinking about running into someone that I was talking to out in the wild really made me anxious. I ended up matching with this guy. We'll call him Marco. Marco was 20 and a junior in a neighboring university about 15 minutes up the road. He had one selfie, and the other two pictures he had were group photos, and they seemed older, but I didn't think much of it. We started chatting, and very quickly, he asked for my phone number. I would say it was a little too early for that, but he kept on insisting, and I eventually gave in. After about two days of talking, he started to ask me for pictures, so I would send selfies. He would ask me for more provocative pictures, and I kept shutting him down telling him I wasn't interested in that, and I just wanted to see where things went. Marco would say that he couldn't wait to meet me so that he could kiss me, and every time he would say that, I would change his subject. We planned a date after a week of talking. He said he knew a good Indian restaurant over by his school, and that we could walk into the downtown area after. I agreed, as it was a public scene. The day came for the date, and I started to get a weird feeling. I told my roommate what we had planned and she said that she would keep her phone on if I needed her. A few hours before the day I got cold feet and told him that my car wouldn't start and asked to reschedule. He offered to pick me up but I kept telling him no and that we should reschedule. But he kept on insisting and started to make me feel guilty. He would say how he was looking forward to it the past few days and I was hurting his feelings. That he would be more than willing to get me but I'm not giving him the chance. Well, I caved, and it was the worst decision. Despite the feelings I was having, I told him the information to get to the lot outside my dorm. Right when I got into the car, I realized that it was probably going to be a horrible date. Right away, he tried to hold my hand and asked me to give him a kiss. I denied him, so he started to drive off. On the way to our destination, he drops that we're no longer going to the restaurant and that we're going to his apartment instead and that he would cook dinner for me. At this point, my heart sank and I started to have a small panic attack. I texted my roommate, letting her know. She was worried and said that she would come and get me if I needed. Again, not listening to my gut, I told her that it's fine and we get to his place. When I said this apartment was disgusting, I mean, it was covered with trash, dirty clothes, and dishes. He said that we had to go back into his room because his roommate was home, and he didn't like it when he had a company. His bedroom was even worse than the common area. There was only a single path to his bed and his bathroom. It was so dirty. We sat on his bed and he turned on the movie. I can't remember the movie. All I remember was the stench from the room and him starting to make advances on me. Marco started rubbing my back and shoulders. I kept scooting away, trying to put some distance between us, but it didn't work. After a few minutes, he started to force himself on me. He started to kiss me hard and holding my head so I couldn't move it. I don't know how, but he was eventually on top of me, forcing his entire body weight on me, and I couldn't move an inch. I'm paralyzed by fear. He doesn't get much further than that because as soon as he gets on me, he just as quickly gets off and runs to his restroom. He's throwing up. I've never been so thankful for vomit. When he came out, he apologized about getting sick, that it happens all the time, and says that he needs to take me home. Trembling, I just get up, straighten myself, and follow him out. I don't know if he's going to try anything else and I don't want to aggravate him or say anything wrong, so I tried to act like nothing was wrong to get home safely. And luckily, that happens. He pulls up to my building and tells me that he wants to make it up to me, and I just nod and say goodnight and get out of his car. Once inside, I block him, report him on Tinder, and delete the app. I also took extra measures to block him on any social media I could. 
I didn't tell anyone at first what happened. I was embarrassed because I put myself in that position. I started getting calls from random numbers and when I answered, there wouldn't be anyone on the other line. I would block the number and a new one would end up calling. It got to the point where my phone was ringing constantly. After the phone calls were random Facebook and Instagram messages from different accounts. They would say things like, Why are you ignoring me? Why aren't you talking to me? Then they started getting more aggressive and threatening. My roommate started getting messages too, and I tell her everything. She told me I needed to report him, or at least tell my parents. I didn't do either because I was scared. That was until I started receiving random pictures of myself. I would be walking on campus, in the dining hall, in class. Then I got one of me in my dorm room. It was taken through a window which is on the second floor. However, the main street has a hill that was the same level as my window and is what my room faced. My bed was in the front of that window. I told my roommate and she made me tell the RA. The RA was very concerned and ended up calling campus police. I made a report with them. The messages continued and so did the photos until one day, about a week later, he approached me on campus. He grabbed me by my arm and tried to take me to his car. I started to yell and luckily there were campus police nearby. He was arrested and banned from my campus and I didn't hear from him again. This was quite a few years ago so some of my memories aren't as vivid as I've tried to block this part of my past out. Not many people know that this happened to me. To this day my family doesn't know. The only people that know are my college roommate, the RA, the campus police, my therapist, and as of the other night, my fiancé. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of online dating. Always trust your gut. If something doesn't seem right, it probably isn't. Not all online dates have consequences. I met my fiancé a few years later on a different online dating profile. But your gut is usually right, and sometimes it's crucial to listen to it. With that being said, Marco, let's not meet again. Two years ago, I met this guy on Tinder. Good feeling from the start, and we quickly decided to see each other. He asked me to come sleep at his place, which I accepted because we had mutual friends. I told myself he was definitely someone I can trust. I arrived at his house at 9pm, and I immediately see that it's not what I imagined. He looked dirty. His apartment looked like he was a squatter, and there was a smell of stale tobacco in every room. I see a stack of books on autism and I ask him about it. I learned at this moment that he was autistic with Asperger's and that he has difficulty differentiating from right and wrong. He also tells me that he knows how to analyze nonverbal language very well and that he knows what a person's thinking just by their attitude. I didn't know anything about that, but I directly wondered what his inability to recognize right from wrong meant. He offers me a glass of alcohol, which I accept. And as I follow him into the kitchen, I see a weapon placed on the counter. I'm a little panicked when I see this, and seeing my look, he explains to me that it's not charged and that it belongs to his father. I never saw if it was a real weapon, but I'm starting to get a little uneasy. On Tinder, he told me he wrote quite a bit, like me. So he shows me a poem he wrote on his computer. He recounted the rape of a child in quite precise detail. I freaked out. I pretended to appreciate his talent because he was really starting to scare me. We then talk about his ex and he tells me that they had fun choking and drowning each other in the shower because they wanted to know what it felt like to have control over the other's life. It was too much. I had swept away a lot of red flags in just a few hours, but I wanted to leave. Problem, I had to sleep at his house. So I had to find a plausible excuse to leave without him understanding that I was fleeing the situation. I was afraid that he had bad intentions and would come after me if he understood that I was afraid and that I understood his little game. I discreetly sent a message to my father with the address so that he can come pick me up immediately. I explained to the boy that unfortunately I couldn't stay 
but I was really disappointed on not being able to stay longer. I played it to perfection. At that moment, we were both in bed, and I was looking at my phone, waiting for only one thing, to find out that my father is going to be here. At this point, he asked me if I'm in a hurry to leave because he notices that I'm looking at my phone regularly. I'm scared because I remember him saying that he knew what a person was thinking just by their attitude. I told myself that he was going to take action if I didn't hide my fear. I managed to make him believe. At least I had the impression that everything was okay and that I was in absolutely no hurry to leave. He offers me a massage to which I try to refuse, but not wanting him to understand my discomfort, especially since I would soon be out of this trouble, I accept. I find myself in my underwear, him on top. It was horrible. Just as he was about to touch my chest, my phone rang. My father was in front of the house. I get dressed quickly and barely say goodbye to him as I leave his apartment. I sent him one last message explaining that I didn't want to follow up because his behavior really freaked me out. Then I blocked him. One of my friends matched with him on Tinder a few days later. He had offered them to come and sleep at his place. I warned my friend who didn't follow up with this guy. I don't know if it was just weird or if something could have happened to me, but be careful on Tinder. You never really know the person. This happened about five years ago. I randomly just felt like I wanted to share this with someone. I also hope this can help other people in similar situations. I just gotten out of a two year long relationship living in a city I moved to for my then boyfriend. After he left, I felt lonely and heartbroken. I was stuck in the apartment we shared. I downloaded Tinder to chat to guys as a way of coping with the breakup. There, I matched with this guy. He was about four years older than me. He was extremely handsome and charming. He was very much into fitness and had an amazing body. After talking for a few days, he asked to meet, so we did. He came over to my house and I was immediately attracted to him. He was a bad boy, the kind I usually fall for. But he was also sweet in the way that he talked to me. He kept complimenting me and doing sweet stuff for me. After a few days of meeting, we ended up having sex and honestly, it was the best sex I've ever had. I felt this intense chemistry between us. We started hanging out and having sex a lot. At the time, I did smoke weed a lot. I know he smoked too, and did some other drugs. I didn't really care much at the time. Eventually, he ended up asking me to hang out pretty much every day, begging me to come over because he missed me. When I told him I was too tired, he would bribe me with stuff, like saying he would give me massages, weed, dinner, romantic things, give me the best night, etc. He didn't like it when I told him no. He would sometimes get angry send a bunch of messages just pleading for me to come over. After every time I had been to his house, he would shower me with love via messages. He was so romantic, saying I made him feel so amazing, that there was something special about me and that he loved being with me. He would often shower me with compliments, but then get angry when I said I didn't have time to hang out with him. One time when I was at his house, he got a phone call from someone. After he hung up, he told me I had to go upstairs and hide because his baby mama was coming over. He didn't want her to see me because she was crazy. He had told me some crazy stuff she had apparently done. I believed him. He was very convincing. I believe this happened twice. Now I know I should have seen the red flags. I probably did to some extent, but I didn't care much. I kept hanging out a lot with him even though I figured that he was heavy on drugs like coke and speed. One day, I was at his house and we had sex. I had smoked a lot and he was on coke and probably some other stuff. He wanted to have sex again but got frustrated that he couldn't get it up. He got mad and kind of blamed it on me for not being firm enough on the grip. He kind of yelled at me, squeeze harder, and he just kept getting more frustrated. I felt uncomfortable and wanted to leave, but he wanted me to stay. He tried to continue, but it didn't work. I was extremely uncomfortable and felt embarrassed. 
After a while, I told him I wanted to leave. He then told me to give him back the weed he gave me, as in his mind, it was payment for me being with him. I honestly felt so pissed, so I grabbed my stuff and walked out the door. He followed me. At first, he walked calmly about 30 meters behind me, begging me to stay with him, asking where I was going. I kept walking and saying no. He then ran towards me. I picked up my phone to call a friend of mine because I could tell that he was getting aggressive. I turned around and saw him literally tear his shirt open and stomping towards me. He grabbed the phone out of my hands, then kicked me in the stomach so hard that I fell into a ditch. He then smashed my phone to the ground and then told me, You're done. I thought he was going to beat me up, but then it looked like he was actually trying to contain himself for a second and just turned around and left. I was mortified by what he had done. I ran away, shaking. I can't even remember how I got home, but I somehow did. I was able to borrow a phone from someone else and call my friend. He came over. I had bruises on my stomach and legs, and I had no phone. I also called the police using my friend's phone and told them that I wanted to press charges. A few days later, he messaged me saying that I tried to steal from him, that I took advantage of him just to get some weed. A few hours later, he texted me saying sorry. A few more hours, he texted me asking what had happened to me yesterday. Then a week later, he found out that I had reported him to the police. He was mad. He said he couldn't believe I reported him. Then he told me that he would give me two new phones or whatever I wanted if I withdrew the report. That he wouldn't contact me anymore if I just did it. He just didn't want to get in trouble and didn't want to lose his daughter. I didn't answer. Then he sent me another message fabricating the whole story of what happened that night. He kept harassing me for weeks with messages. Some days he was begging us to get back together or be friends, bribing me. Other days he was accusing me of random stuff, calling me names, etc. And that he had a great lawyer. That he would report me to the police for stuff I had never actually done. He kept acting like a smartass saying that he would beat me in court. It all just became big chaos. After a few months, there was a trial. I couldn't attend physically, so I testified via a phone call. I was questioned about our relationship and the incident that night. He lied made up stories about me, but no one believed him. As the trial was done, I received all the papers in the mail. I was shocked when I read it. He had previously been charged with violence and rape towards his ex. Apparently, there was also an incident where he forced his ex-girlfriend to touch him while multiple other men watched and videotaped her. There were other girls too that had experienced similar things. Stuff like robbery, weapons, fights, violence, and torture. You name it. He had been in jail multiple times. I had no idea I was dealing with such a dangerous man. I'm pretty sure he is a psychopath. He has no understanding of what he has done. The sick part is, I recently came across a post of him on Facebook. Apparently he is pretty popular with women lately on Snapchat and Instagram. He posts stuff about his life, whining about being beaten up by random men, being tortured, robbed, etc. That people followed him with guns. I have learned the reason why he keeps getting beaten up by people is because they know what he has done. He posted pictures of himself in the hospital to make people feel bad for him. And they do. He makes women feel sorry for him. He says people lie and make up stories about him. And he gains pity. He then posts all the sweet replies and messages girls send him. Saying stuff like he feels so grateful for all the support. He's extremely good at manipulating people. I honestly feel lucky I got away at the time I did and that it didn't escalate any further. I checked his Facebook and apparently he has a girlfriend now. I pray he doesn't hurt her in any way. This story happened about nine years ago and sometimes comes to my mind. It creeps me out. So I was on an adult dating site. One of the fetish types, don't judge me. It looked like some fun. Anyway, I was stupid and gave out more information than I should have. I was chatting with a guy. He asked me at some point what I do for work. At the time, I was working at McDonald's. 
So I told him. He asked which one. I stupidly told him which one. We chatted off and on. We hadn't been chatting for too long. I also stupidly gave him my phone number at some point. He would talk about how he wanted to meet me on my break and have some fun on my break. I told him no thanks. I don't bring that lifestyle to my job. Anyway, I checked my messages just before I was due to clock out of work. Luckily, I did. He mentioned that he was at my job and told me what he ordered. I think it was a Big Mac meal. I was like, um, okay, well, don't expect me to do anything with you. I'm not interested. He then got upset and wasn't accepting that I wasn't interested. I was also scared because I had sent him a face picture of myself, but I had never received one from him. I really wasn't too interested in him, so I decided I didn't need a face picture since I wasn't going to meet up with him. His interests weren't what I was looking for, and I have a hard time straight up saying that I'm not interested and just slowly start ghosting them. Now luckily, I hadn't told him my work schedule, so he didn't know I was about to clock out. So after clocking out, I told my manager that I was on a dating site and this guy just showed up to my work and I have no idea what he looks like, that I was just going to hang out in the back in the break room for a bit. Luckily, she didn't judge me and was just like, oh, okay. So I waited about half an hour before I left. I didn't have a car at the time, so I had to walk home and I was afraid that he would see me and try to pick me up in his car. Luckily, no one followed me, so I was in the clear. So creepy guy, let's not meet. I don't think he ever messaged me again, or I ended up blocking him or something. I don't know if this is really all that creepy, but it creeps me out that some random guy just decided that he would show up at my job and expect me to want to meet up with him. So now, I just give vague responses to where I work. I don't work at the same town I live in, so it would be harder to pinpoint my exact location. This opened my eyes and made me more aware of the information that I give to strangers. I was going through my own version of high school hell in the late 2000s. I met a boy on one of those outdated chat rooms, such as ICQ, but specific to my area. We hit it off, mostly in MSN, and became really good invisible friends. He was insignificantly older than me. My story is going to be a patchwork of sparse memories as it was stretched out over a course of two years. We'll call him Steve. Steve and I mostly indulged in very wholesome and friendly conversations with no romance or sexual interest in sight. One thing I did notice right away that it was almost constantly online, which was quite unusual back then. A big passion of his was music. Steve had an extensive knowledge of religious hip-hop targeted towards teenagers. He would find an obscure song with very few views on YouTube and send it to me. I was a doom metal kid, but that didn't stop me from enjoying the occasional carefree rap about a high school love or recreational drug abuse. We had spent many nights listening to music and reading lyrics together. All these beautiful moments pushed me closer to him, and he became one of my best friends. I was alienated from the community due to my unusual style and love for metal. Being introverted didn't help either. Anyone who didn't fit the mold in terms of appearance, behavior, or taste was pushed beyond the margin. I had brightly colored hair and wore chucks and a regular black t-shirt as I was too poor. I also liked making yarn, spike, and chain jewelry. My irrelevancy and disinterest in the popular kids' lives inspired me to look for a new social circle, and that's where Steve stepped in. My best friend at the time was Jane. She was my classmate and a part of the Unpopular Kids Club as well. Jane was ostracized because she lost her virginity at a very young age. People would look at us and ask out loud, how are you two best friends? In their defense, we were a walking contrast. She wore pink, leopard print, and flashy shoes. And then there was a random black hole next to her. Our friendship has stood strong against 10 long years, and then we went our separate ways. Anyway, I introduced Jane to Steve, and sparks started flying right away. He was blown away by her beauty, and she loved his goofy personality. In between MSN nudges and prehistoric smiley faces, a new love was born, and witnessing it was beautiful. My greatest comfort in life was coming home after school 
turning on my computer, and chatting the evening away with both of them. Somehow, all the yelling in the background faded away and was replaced with laughter of one. Yes, she was in love, and I found my gang, but our infatuation didn't blind us completely. We sensed that something was off, and that we might be talking to a bag of air the whole time. Although we lived in the same part of the world, we weren't exactly roof to roof. Still, he never asked if any of us would be interested in hanging out in person. Steve sent a few pictures of himself. Apparently, he was this unreasonably attractive tan boy with a six-pack and piercing blue eyes. We didn't only receive his pictures. No, he would tell us a little backstory of every one of them. One pictured him and a teddy bear his girlfriend had gifted him. Jane was dying to talk to Steve on the phone, and he would always come up with the most transparent excuses. I was crossing the street, dropped my phone, and a bus ran over it. Or... I have a terrible voice. He was a singer in a band. He didn't even try to construct a good lie that would make sense in this universe. Still, the entertainment value and the emotional depth we had achieved with this kid kept us chatting. We did have our reservations, but they didn't stop Jane from turning her camera on and flashing him on New Year's Eve. One day, he told us that the blue-eyed Jim rat kid was, in fact, not him. We kind of already knew that but were anxious to see what he would come up with next. Steve sent us a few modeling photos of another guy who looked even more conventionally attractive than the first one. At this point, we were completely sure that we were being catfished, but decided once again to enjoy the ride. My memory is a bit challenged, so I can't say for sure when Jane and I stopped talking to him. He was never rude and not one threat ever came from his fingers, but I still can't tell if our breakup was amicable. It's possible that we were finally spooked by the thought of an older man or a group of people posing online of one innocent, music-loving boy. A few years ago, I was randomly digging through my contacts and found his name. He had a Viber, and when I opened it, I saw that his profile photo was that of an older woman. This is the greatest mystery of my life. Jane and I spent hours guessing who Steve could have been and turning all the disturbing possibilities into a joke. She used to say, who knows whom I show my titties to. I have a few theories, but one thing I could say for sure is, he was not a teenage boy. Thing is, whoever was doing this, their immature way of self-expression was extremely believable. Everything was on point, from Steve's choice of words and music taste, to a young man's awkwardness around a girl he liked. I'm still in my mom's car. She bought a new one that isn't very internet savvy. So she asked if I'm willing to do it for her and she'll split the money with me. If nobody buys it, she'll just write it into my name. Some people have came to take a look at it. And one evening this man calls asking if it's still available and if he can see it. I said yes and gave him the address and he arrived after an hour or so. At first he seemed okay enough and asked questions about the car. My husband was also there, and they went for a test drive. When they return, he starts looking for faults and complains how he thinks that the price is too high. We tell him that the price is not negotiable, as the car has few miles, and has been kept in good condition. He gets more and more angry, demands for a lower price, and states that we couldn't get it sold with the current one. We tell him that in that case, we'll simply keep it. He gets even more angry and starts yelling at us, how he drove from another town, etc. We tell him we understand, but there's always a possibility that you might not be buying the car. He yells and curses and demands we sell for a significant lower price, and we refuse. Finally, he asks one more time if we agree with the offered price, and when we say we don't, he gets in the car and drives away. I was a bit nervous after that, as the psycho knew where we lived, but it happened two weeks ago and I haven't seen him again. Still a bit nervous though. About seven years ago, right before I met my now husband, I joined a few dating apps. A few of my friends had wonderful experiences and met their now spouses, so I figured I'd give it a try. I was 21 at the time and had recently lost quite a bit of weight and was teeny for the first time in my life, so I was ready to put myself out there. I didn't take it too seriously, let the men come to me, and eventually, 
there's this guy that caught my eye. His name, well, we'll call him Watson. He was 23 and handsome, in my opinion. We matched on Bumble and kept talking for quite a while. It turned into texting and then phone calls and then him asking to meet up. Now don't get me wrong, I didn't have any superpowers that I could tell the future, but when he asked to start seeing each other in person, I just had an off gut feeling. I thought maybe it was due to my anxiety, but later found out, I just knew. After blowing off plans and saying I was busy multiple times, he got mad and blocked me on everything. That was fine. I felt a bit bad, but I was also 21, and he gave me the creeps, so good riddance. Fast forward six months later, I had met and started dating my now husband. I got a message from Watson on Facebook and let him know that I had met someone new, and I wished him well. He got angry, oddly for someone I have never met in person, calling me names, swearing a ton, so I blocked him. Then came the spam accounts, the new Instagram handles, more name calling, which became threats. Thankfully, he did back off eventually. I was so relieved. I had never dealt with someone like this before or after, so I was generally scared. A year later, I was in Target shopping for shoes and makeup. I check out, head to my car, key in hand. I had just opened my door after loading my trunk when I heard someone yelling my name. I turned around thinking it was a friend or coworker, but it was Watson. I got into the car without a word. I definitely wanted to fight or flight mode and was ready to fly. The last thing I saw was him standing in the middle of Target parking lot after chasing my car. It's been years and I haven't heard or seen from him and I hope I never have another creepy encounter. First off, I know better than meet people at their homes. So yes, this was stupid of me. I acknowledge that I acted in an unsafe way for my own well-being. I met Brandon on a dating app. He has been awkward to talk to, but we have stuck to texting, so I thought maybe it was just nerves and the form of communication. We have similar interests, so I kept the conversation going. He messaged me the other day asking if I wanted to come over and watch the new season of Witcher. I hesitated and asked if he was inviting me to his place. He said yes. He also quickly added that his female roommate was home or else he would have not asked. I decided to go. Stupid, I know. I entered his apartment and he was the only person there. Sat down on the other side of the room from him and he got up and came to sit right next to me. He turned the show on and the next thing I know his pants were down and he was asking me to sit on his lap. No condom. I'm not on birth control as I just got divorced and I'm currently waiting for the doctor's appointment. And he was aware of this as we discussed kids, pregnancy abilities because I have teens, and he has no kids, and wants one. So not only did this guy think I was going to have sex with him the first time I met him, he was cool if we got pregnant, apparently. I stood up and went to leave, and he says, wait. I look back, and he's actually asked me if I would give him a hand job. I was just shocked and left, and told him good luck. I'm a male in my 30s now. This happened about 10 years ago with the onset of Tinder and swiping apps. New to the game, I mostly wanted to get some action, but totally naive and not realizing what kind of Pandora's box can be opened meeting strangers online. I matched with a cute girl. We flirt, message over a couple days, and I get the vibe that she's down to fuck. We had plans for a few days, but the day before, she booty texts me late. She says she's been drinking, sends me some revealing text, and invites me to her house. It's late, and I'm only thinking with the lower half of my body. She sends me an address that's kind of in a sketchy neighborhood. Whatever, not my first shady booty call. I get closer to the house, and let her know that I'm there. Weird, semi-developed neighborhood. The houses look partially finished. I do see a light in the basement, but I get weird vibes. She makes a weird comment about that and not to worry. I'm feeling sketched out and I'm obviously committed and horny. I get out of the car and I feel the most intense sense of dread to bail. As soon as I turn around, I hear running from behind me, multiple footsteps. My balls shrunk into my ovaries as I ran to the car, open the door and lock the door. I see three figures wearing creepy masks banging on my door windows, 
windshield and one of the dudes swings his bat onto my windshield. Huge crack and I tried to start the car. I dropped the keys. I was so scared. I got the keys and turned the ignition and slammed on the gas. One dude hit my side mirror and fell. I almost ran into the street pole. After recovering from a heart attack while driving, I raced home and spent the next 24 hours replaying the whole thing over and over again. Never told anyone. I made up a story about a deer hitting my car to explain the windshield. Guess I felt dumb and desperately wanted to pretend I wasn't really that gullible. I live in a small town and a few years ago, our local market had taken new owners. They fired all of the employees and completely redid everything, including obviously hiring new staff. At the time, I was a regular for around five years. It was super convenient because I lived right down the street. I didn't have a car then, so I shopped there daily, sometimes multiple times a day. I'd build a rapport with the original owners, elderly, and banter with the original employees older locals. I only knew one person by their name because she asked after years of exchange and it turned out we shared the same name. But that's about where our passing relationship ended. Moving forward, new owners, reopening, new staff. I got a car and my business there wasn't as frequent but still pretty consistent. Needing a drink, snack, or missing an ingredient for dinner. I'm a relatively friendly person but also super anxious, especially with men I don't know. So when the new staff came in, I waited in line, smile, say hi, pay, thank you, and dip. They were all friendly, but one of the cashier was a little too comfortable. He would lean over the counter. When I said I don't need a bag, he'd put my stuff in one anyway and touch my hand when handing it over. It made me feel super awkward and off. I also did a local yoga class, and after class, me and the other women would get drinks at the market and walk around to catch up. The creepy cashier would always make a weird conversation about our class. I stopped going there for a little bit. Then my car decided to stop working, and then I had no choice but to start frequenting that market again. The creepy cashier was excited to see me and asked where I'd been. I don't remember what I said, but I kept it casual. Over the weeks, he crept on me. He never asked my name, but had asked if I was married. He saw my ring. He asked me a million times if I had IG, Facebook. I glazed over the IG question by saying I haven't had Facebook since high school, which was true. So what about a passing line about my IG? It actually worked and ended our conversation. Finally exhausted from evading his questions, I caved when he asked me if I had IG. I said yes, and that I don't really use it a lot. Oddly, during our transaction, the register was on the fritz. My card wouldn't swipe and I handed it over to him and he manually added the card. And I was on my way. I went home, made dinner, put something on to watch and scrolled through my phone. I had a friend request and my jaw dropped. It was a fucking creepy cashier. I instantly lost my appetite and felt so uncomfortable. After deducing that he got my full name from my debit card and then looked me up, it made me sick. I denied the request. Several hours later, another request along with a message, what you up to? Denied the request, ignored the message. Over the course of two days, there were multiple requests and multiple messages. How are you? How's your day? Hey. Trying to engage me in conversation with multiple selfies. Who sends multiple selfies? I continued to ignore him and then blocked him. I ended up talking to a friend and she said she always felt uncomfortable and that he tried to walk her home one night. He stopped working there a couple weeks later. Apparently, complaints were made. I'm shocked. In retrospect, I should have been more direct, no nonsense, in my responses with him. But I felt so anxious and uncomfortable, especially since it was down the street from my home. So this happened in 2020. I was 11 at the time, turning 12 soon. And this guy, let's call him Ollie, slides into my Insta DMs. I ignore him for a while, but then I get curious, so I reply with, Hi. The message has been pending for months, but he immediately replies asking my name, location, and gender. 
I was being dumb, so I told him everything, except my age. I said, I'm 16. He said he was 19, turning 20. That same night, he started excessively telling me how he wanted to make love to me, in detail, and marry me, telling me that he wanted kids with me. Keep in mind, he had been talking to me for approximately an hour or two. Then that harassment, he wanted to see nudes of me, and didn't stop until I sent something. I just sent him a random picture from Google, but this was the first time this has happened to me, and he just kept going. Over the past month or so, he had kept sending, wanting more, but I declined, and he started to talk about what he wanted to do to me. He got angry, threatening me to look out, that he would take the next flight to me. I got scared and told him that I was 12, trying to make him stop. Surprise, it didn't. Then he sent me a text. Are you scared? I dead ass shit myself. I didn't know where he was. I didn't trust this location he sent me. I blocked him. I unblocked him like a year later and he sent another message telling me to look out because he's in my country. He was drunk, I could tell by the way he typed. He told me he was with girls prettier than me. I hope they were also older than 13. But he scared me again. I blocked him again. I later found out that after I blocked him the first time, he moved over to a new girl, a town over. So, dear Ali, I hope we never meet. America Online was big when I was 13. Or in other words, AIM, which stood for, you guessed it, AOL Instant Messenger. It was around 2002 when I would have been 13 and in 8th grade. I had many times went into chat rooms by myself or with friends goofing around. Unfortunately, unsolicited photos were a thing then too, but usually you could stay clear of it by the chat room you entered. I didn't have any photos of myself, and back then you had to take a digital photo and upload it from your camera. Plus, I was 13 and self-conscious, which I'm sure anyone can relate with. But one day, a guy popped up on my screen wanting to chat. It went fine at first. I was very naive back then, and we quickly fell into a pattern of talking. His name was Dave, and he lived in California. Eventually, he was telling me that he loved me, etc. But the problem was, he was 19. Now, I wasn't proud of this, but at first, being 13, I just sent him pictures of some random girl and said it was me. He instantly fell for me telling me that age was just a number and how mature I was. Now at this point, he did not live near my state, so there was no chance of us meeting. Eventually, he told me that his mom was moving up to a city that was an hour and a half away from me. He started begging me to see him and to go to a movie, anything. I had to break the catfishing truth and say that those were not pictures of me, but someone else. He was furious. Dave forgave me a few days later saying, I want to meet you because I love you. All the things you say to a young girl to get her to swoon. I think back and I'm like, wow, I was 13. So I told my best friend everything and that I wanted her to go with me to meet up with him. There was a whole plan about him driving to see me and going to the movies to finally meet what I thought was the love of my life. I had been brainwashed into believing this was normal. I didn't tell my mom of course, and honestly she didn't notice any of it was going on to begin with. So on the day that my friend and I were going to meet up with Dave, my friend's mom came and picked us up from school. She said something that made my stomach drop into nothingness. She said, Chrissy, you're not going to the movies. You're not going to meet that man. You're going to get seriously hurt or kidnapped, and I can't allow you guys to go. I cried and cried because I honestly thought I could handle everything and I'd be fine. She told me that she wasn't going to tell my mom, but I had to promise not to speak to him again and never plan to meet up with a stranger online. He ended up showing up and was upset that I wasn't there. He went on AIM, flying off the handle like I hadn't seen at that age. It scared me. It scared me so much of how close I was to this man being near me. I never talked to Dave again, but I easily believe I would have been kidnapped or worse if my best friend's mom hadn't stepped in. My mom would have been none the wiser. I was none the wiser. 
but I'm here today and I learned a dire lesson. I'm a 31 year old female, mother of two young girls, and I fear that they will make the same mistake I did. When I was 16, I wasn't really getting the attention I wanted from boys at school. All of my friends had, or at one time had a boyfriend while in high school, but I had yet to be asked out, yet alone kissed. The depressed feeling of going to school every day, feeling invisible, was too much for me to handle. I needed some sort of attention, and I was willing to try anything. I had heard people talking about this one site called Plenty of Fish, and thought about giving it a shot. Now, I wasn't trying to meet anyone from that site. My plan was just to talk, flirt, and I guess just practice being comfortable in my own skin, so I could use it in real life. One day, after an awful day of school, I got home and just decided to do it. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? Looking back now, I was an idiot. I wanted to grow up so fast when I should have just been enjoying my teenage years. So I uploaded a picture of myself where I appeared to be a little older than I actually was. I added my name to my profile but used my middle name rather than my first name. I thought at the time that I was being super safe. Jeez, I was a moron. I listed my age as 18. I know, I know. The first few weeks, I would get messages from guys, some nice, some a tad perverted, but nothing too strange or meaningful. It was fun, but I hadn't really met anyone I vibed with. I was kind of getting a little bored of this experiment. That was all stopped when I got a message from Greg. Greg was 22, pretty good looking and had the most beautiful eyes. He came off as sweet, but a little bit shy, which was almost the same as me and we hit it off. He wasn't like the other guys that had messaged me previously. He was actually interested in the things I had to say. He would ask follow-up questions all the time and mention things that I shared with him in later conversations. He seemed like he was the perfect guy. Over the next few weeks, we talked every night. I literally was in my room after dinner until bedtime chatting it up with him. I told him my biggest secrets Things I hadn't even told to my best friend at the time. I eventually told him I was only 16 years old, but he surprisingly said that he was okay with it. It was the same night that we officially started our online relationship. This is where things started to change. At first, it just seemed like he was eager and persistent to meet up. I was so nervous at the thought of him not liking me if we met up, so I was very hesitant. Over time, it seemed like he would not take me saying later or in a few months without trying to pressure me to meet up with him. I got to the point where I almost thought I owed him a meet up, like I was the one being unreasonable. I was lost, unsure what to do, and I guess I gave in to the pressure. We scheduled a time and place to meet up, but that night, I was called into work. I told him we would need to reschedule. This is where he lost his shit and I became scared for my life. He started calling me over and over again, leaving me messages like, I know you're lying. Who is he? Where are you? Why are you doing this to me? I was at work, so I didn't respond to him until about two hours later. I told him I was at work, and that we would meet up soon. He responded with, I know you're lying, bitch. I'm going to find you in the dude, and I'm going to make you pay. You've been playing me this whole time. He even said that he went to my work and didn't see me. I had mentioned where I worked in previous conversations, but I wasn't sure if he was serious or not. I was in the back room most of the night, so he could have actually been serious. He continued to follow up with cursing me out and calling me all sorts of names. Luckily, my dad was picking me up that night, so if he was out there, at least I had some sort of protection. I told my dad what was going on in the car ride home and he made sure that no one was following us. I blocked him and deleted plenty of fish that night. I never used the online dating service after that and I just hoped that my daughters would be smarter than I was. When I was a younger teen in high school, 
I was fairly popular on Snapchat and had a public profile with thousands of followers. I'm also a model, so I posted my face fairly regularly. Being a minor who was popular on Snapchat obviously garnered a lot of unwanted attention and tons of creeps and pedophiles. They were always hitting on me, even asking me for nudes. I was very, very open about being a minor and posted about it regularly in hopes that I got some of the morally sound people to leave me alone, which it did. I was also as safe as I could be online. My location was never on. I didn't even model under my actual name. The closest I got to my location was my state. I didn't allow things I was tagged on to show up on my profile, etc. Despite this, being a victim of freaks was fairly normal for me, to the point where I would simply block and report and be completely unaffected. This is, however, one person who left a huge impact on me. We'll call him Carlos. I don't remember when he added me, but I remember that when he texted me, I was 15. He seemed pretty normal at first, asking me how I was, my interest, pretty standard stuff. He revealed that we had a mutual real life friend, an older boy who went to my high school, he revealed that he lived in a town maybe a few hours away. This was also something that was pretty normal for me to encounter as I was somewhat known in neighboring schools outside of my town, especially in the town that he said he was from. So it wasn't a huge red flag for me at all. No, I did not tell him what school I went to. Eventually, he began getting odd. His neutral compliments became less neutral, which also didn't concern me as I was used to being complimented and he wasn't being sexual. One day though, Carlos told me he wanted me to have sex with him and offered to pay me $500 and said that he would pay me $700 if I also sent nudes. I told him that I was a minor and I don't have sex and I asked him how old he was. Up until this point, I assumed that he was a minor as well. He told me that he was 20. I told him my age and he said my age was fine. I brought up that it was illegal and he told me that no one had to find out and began begging me to meet up with him. I showed my friend as I had never encountered something like this before. They told me to go along with it and maybe I could blackmail him. I told them that I wanted to report it instead, but I wouldn't cut off communications as Snapchat to lead our conversation with people when he blocked them. Carlos continued to beg me, even telling me where he wanted to meet, a park. I told him that I don't like sex at all, so he started telling me that he could just hang out with me instead and tried to coerce me, saying that he could give me alcohol and drugs. I became scared to show my parents or the police and instead showed another friend to ask for help and advice on what to say to him. My parents were extremely abusive and they actually punished me for being groomed in the past. She ended up using my phone and cussing him out and blocking him for me. I deleted Snapchat and haven't used it since. Every time I think about that man, it gives me chills. I am sure that I'm not the only victim and cannot imagine how many others he has done the same thing to. I really wish I could have reported it, but I don't believe any of my previous reports actually did much. Sometimes though, I think a lot more of what ifs and began to feel a little guilty about the way the whole thing was handled. And I feel like I could have done something to prevent other victims. I'm sure that there are others before and after me. He was eerily casual about the whole ordeal. I thought I had it all. The perfect boyfriend, good grades, and got into my dream college. I was excited to start the next chapter of my life. We both got accepted into top colleges, and although they were at different schools, we were going to make it work. Nothing was going to break us up. Little did I know, he dumped me. He dumped me on graduation night. He was going to college and didn't want to be tied down. I was crushed and felt like the last three years of my life was a waste of time. I couldn't leave my house for weeks. I laid around and cried and felt sorry for myself. My mom came into my room and said, Go out. Enjoy your summer. You only have a few months till you're off to college where you'll meet so many new people. So I did just that. I called my friends, hung out, went to the beach, went to parties, 
just enjoying life. I was ready to move on. I wanted to casually date now, but nothing serious. I was leaving in a month and a half. I just wanted to have fun. My friends kept telling me about this app where you could swipe left or right if I thought they were attractive. Tinder. They were telling me I should create an account on there and meet guys. I honestly wasn't really interested in meeting guys online, but they downloaded the app on my phone and made an account for me anyways. For the first few days, I didn't even mess with it. Until one night, my friends came over and we were in my room hanging out listening to music. I grabbed my phone and opened the app and we started swiping away. We were having fun, laughing, joking, just having a good time. The next day, I received a message from this guy named Mark. I read his message and decided to respond back. We casually started messaging each other, asking questions, getting to know each other. So we decided to exchange numbers. I told him I wasn't looking for anything serious as I was leaving for college soon. We started texting all the time, day and night. He wanted to meet up and hang out, but I wasn't really ready. He kept pressuring me, asking repeatedly, Come on, don't you want to meet me? I would just brush it off or change the subject. One day he got really upset and started blowing up my phone and getting angry. I had put my phone on silent and left it on my bed. I went downstairs and relaxed. When I came back, I had thousands of missed calls and messages. I couldn't believe it. This should have been my first red flag. I had text after text saying, Answer your phone. Pick up. Stop ignoring me. Don't you want to meet me? I finally replied, chill out, that I was downstairs. He changed his tone and apologized to me. I'm sorry. I just really like you and want to meet you in person. Please, I promise, it will be fine. For some reason, I finally gave in and said fine. I figured everything would be fine if we met up in a public area. I told him, let's meet up at a coffee shop around noon, tomorrow. He replied, I can't make it. Let's meet up in the park around 6 p.m. I was hesitant, but said okay. I called my friend asking her if she was free tomorrow, so she could come meet this guy I had been talking to on Tinder since I thought it would be better not to go alone. My friend is amazing and said yes. I told her I would pick her up at about 5.30 at night. I went to sleep and the next morning, I woke up to several text messages from Mark. Good morning. I can't wait to see you. Don't be late. I replied, Morning, I'll see you later. Later that day, I got ready and called my friend to tell her that I would be on my way in 20 minutes. She apologized but said something came up and she couldn't make it. I hung up with her and was about to call Mark, telling him I had to reschedule, that something came up. But I knew he would complain and I didn't want to hear it, so I decided to just go. I called him up and told him I was on my way. I have never been to that park, so I put the directions into my phone. As I was driving, I had a weird feeling in my stomach telling me not to go. I decided to text my parents letting them know that I was going to meet a guy that I had been talking to on Tinder and gave them the address of the park we were meeting at. As I was getting close to the spot, there were tall trees everywhere, a small wooden fence around the whole area with only one way in and out. I pulled up into the parking lot and parked my car. I got out and looked around. No one was in sight. I called Mark. No answer. I texted him. Hey, I'm here. No reply. I waited there for 25 minutes and nothing. Screw this, I'm leaving. As I was about to get into the car, there was this black van with tinted windows pulling up. They pulled up next to me and a man got out wearing a long black shirt with stained jeans and a baseball cap. Mark? Is that you? What took you so long? He stood there quietly staring at me with a grin on his face not saying a word. Hello? I was beyond annoyed. Hello, are you going to talk? Sorry I'm late. I, I was having car trouble. He was acting weird. Can I give you a hug? It's nice to meet you in person. Come on, let's sit down. 
We went to a nearby bench and sat down. We were talking for a little while. Something was off. He was acting strange. This was not the same person I had been talking to on the phone. Um, it's getting late. I need to go. No, don't go. Stay. No, I'm sorry. I need to be getting home. As I got up to walk away, he grabbed my arm. Please don't go. Stay. I said, I'm sorry, I needed to go. When I got to my car, he grabbed my wrist, hard, squeezing it. I said, don't go. I yanked my arm away from him and said, don't you ever put your hands on me. As I opened my car door, he slammed it shut. I'm not ready to go yet. I told Mark to get away from me. I pushed him out of the way. He stumbled a little. I quickly opened my door and hopped in my car and locked it. I started to put my keys in to start the car and he started pounding on my car. I jumped and screamed, shaking trying to get the key into the ignition. Let me in. I screamed at him to go away. I started the car and sped off. Looking in the mirrors, I could see him standing there with this weird look on his face. I went straight home and blocked his number and deleted Tinder. Never again would I ever go on a dating site. I'm a 25 year old female. I had recently moved to a new city, which is something that a lot of people from my home city are doing. Thus, there's a specific group on Telegram for people from my home city to find housemates, rental buddies. Ben reached out to me after I posted my expectations. Must be a two bedroom, two bath condo, in my budget, etc. And he said he was interested. He said he wanted to meet up first. I figured it was a good idea to meet up a few times before going house hunting together. So we set up a lunch meeting. During lunch, the only thing that annoyed me is him saying he hoped I could lower my budget. I felt like it was a waste of time and clearly our expectations weren't compatible. However, things went weird after lunch. When I was walking towards the subway station, he kept tapping on my shoulder occasionally. Although I felt the frequency was weird, I convinced myself that that was just how he was in general. Based on our previous chit chat, I learned where Ben lives and he's supposed to get off at station A and switch to another line. While I would get off at station B, two stops after station A and then switch onto another line. Because I'm quite new to the city, I didn't realize he had gotten off at station B until I got off myself. He followed me and switched the line with me while trying to start a different conversation with me. One stop before my actual station, I live nearby, I told Ben that I had to get off to do some shopping and ready to say goodbye. Ben followed me off again and went to the grocery store with me. I kept telling him that he could leave and I was fine shopping by myself, but he insisted on staying. Every time I turned around in the grocery store, Ben was standing real close to me. Like if he had boobs, they'd be in my face. I felt super uncomfortable and just grabbed two 4 liter bottle of water and went to the cashier. While I was paying, Ben grabbed my water and offered to take it to the Airbnb I was staying at. I tried to decline politely, but he wouldn't hand me back my water. I didn't want to have my body touched with him, so I didn't want to try to take the water back by force and kind of let him take those waters to my Airbnb. My bad, I know. Ben made his way to the common area of my Airbnb. It's a shared house type. I didn't even invite him in. Then he kept on trying to start more and more conversations with me. At several points it was completely silent, but he still wouldn't leave. In the end, after hours, I had to ask him to leave. Days afterwards, he still kept texting me weird messages, which I didn't reply to at all. I blocked him after I moved out of the Airbnb as I didn't want to trigger him when he still knew where I lived. Hey guys, long time lurker, first time poster. Thought I'd tell you a story about one of the more creepy encounters I've had so far. At the time, I was a few months into my undergrad in Austin, Texas, and I'd just become comfortable enough with myself to come out of the closet at the time, there are no dating apps available, so to find dates, I used Craigslist. Big mistake. 
I started chatting with a guy off Craigslist and we hit it off and decided to set up a time and place for a date to meet in person. His ad said that he was 27 and I was 18 at the time. At first, he was very insistent on meeting at his place, which I later found out was just a trailer and it kind of made me suspicious, but in his pictures, he was very good looking, had a nice smile, etc. So I decided to let it go. Eventually, we agreed to get coffee before going back to his place. So the day arrived and I went to go get coffee and I was pretty excited. I showed my roommate a picture of Craig and talked about how I was looking forward to meeting him. I showed up to the coffee shop and he was already there. He actually did look like his pictures, so that was a good start. We got coffee and ended up chatting for several hours before he asked me if I wanted to go back to his place. Luckily, my roommate called to check up on me and also called because he was stranded because his car broke down. So I told Craig I would take my friend home before heading back over to his place. Well, by the time I picked up my friend, Craig was no longer interested in his phone, text, or anything. When he finally answered, he accused me of making up an excuse so I wouldn't have to go back to his place with him and basically was very angry and annoyed despite our great conversation earlier. I was a bit bummed, but basically didn't think of him until years later when my old roommate sent me a link to this news article about Craig. Apparently, he had been running a sex trafficking ring using underage boys that he would lure through his good looks and promises. I can only imagine what would happen to me if I had gone back to his trailer with him that day. I know this isn't as creepy as other stories, but it definitely gave me chills when I read the article. So a bit of a backstory. I'm an 18 year old female from the UK. This happened in February 2019, so I was 16 at the time. I got set up on a semi-blind date by a mutual friend, and this guy we'll call Cameron. He was 19. Cameron seemed like your average guy, maybe a little into video games and anime and stuff, but overall nothing my friend told me about him seemed off in any way. Our mutual friend gave us each other's numbers and we texted for a night and decided to meet up at a Starbucks the next day since we were both free. I never liked meeting new people this soon but I figured since Cameron knew my friend it couldn't possibly go wrong. How mistaken I was. I arrived slightly early, ordered my coffee since I never liked guys to feel like they have to buy it for me. I parked my seat facing away from the door and pulled out a book. I may be there for 15 minutes chilling out and I get a text saying, I'm here. So I'm like, great, I'm at this table. I feel a presence over my shoulder and I turn my head slightly in acknowledgement. He must be here. Before I could even get a chance to squeak out a hello, his lips latch onto my neck and he starts sucking on my neck. Now I don't like people touching my neck at the best of times. I'm very ticklish and I get super uncomfortable by people even touching my neck. The few times I've gotten massages or hair treatments, I would hold in my discomfort and he latches onto my neck like a leech. And this man smells horrendous, kind of like dust personified. I freak out and elbow him in the chest to get him the hell off me and looks at me with this weird expression on his face and laughs in deadpan. It's really creepy and I start to become alarmed. I ask him what the hell that was and he just says, I thought it was cute. Cute in what world? I try to have a conversation. I'm like, first impressions don't mean anything. Let's try to give him a chance. But he's just creepily staring at my chest. He says, Wow, I didn't know Asians could have boobs like those. I better not let you go. Direct quote, I can't make this shit up. I'm distinctly uncomfortable, but I don't just want to run away. He's giving me really weird vibes. So I go into the ladies' bathroom and wait for someone else to come in. A lady comes in and I ask her to help me get out undetected. I don't want this man following me home or some shit. She of course agrees and lends me her hat and scarf and we come out of the bathroom together. She manages to help me sneak out the back door of Starbucks without him noticing me. He calls and asks my friend where I went but I told my friend never to mention me again. I was too terrified. 
I know, I probably didn't behave well. I should have just told him I was leaving. But honestly, I was just scared. Dear guy who decided it was appropriate to suck up my neck before we had even said hello, let's not meet again. Edit, a few people are asking me about the friend. The friend told me off for leaving without Cameron, saying I was horrible and should have given him a chance, so I unfriended him too. Can't have people like that in your life. This is the first time I've ever posted on Let's Not Meet. I keep reading all these dating horror stories, and it being Valentine's Day and all, it had me recall a nearly forgotten first date with a guy my friend Mark had fixed me up with. I had known the guy a little bit because he worked with my friend at a local music store. He seemed pretty cool and was actually pretty good looking. The first time we had met was at an ICP concert that we all had attended. The guy who we'll call Mike was pretty normal on the surface and through Mark got my number and called me. We went out on a date and as the night drew on he asked me if I minded if we went to go hang out at a local park and chat because we had been at a super busy loud bar that had a band playing. I was 19 and highly stupid back then, so I agreed to it. It was in the summer and wasn't yet dark, so I wasn't thinking it seemed weird. As we were just chatting, he leans in and kisses me, and I look around, realizing it had gotten really dark. I'm in heaven because at this point, he hasn't given me any reason to think he's a creeper. We had had a great time that night, he was charming and funny, and we had a ton in common. Then after our first kiss, he gets a creepy grin. He looks out the window of his car and says to me, I'm taking you into those woods, and we're going to have a really good time. I kind of laugh a bit nervously, because at that time, I hadn't yet lost my virginity. I tell him I'd rather just stay in the car. He gets weird and angry, and it's like he's two different people. Why can't we go in the woods? I promise I won't rape or kill you. By then, he's trying to laugh it off, but I had gotten incredibly creeped out. I tried to play it off like I'm not ready to run away. I should have been more creeped out than I was, but I was so naive. I'm creeped out now, writing this. He looks at me again and leans back in his seat and begins to start fake whining. Oh, come on. Let me just take you to the woods. It'll be fun. I'm having none of this and start getting mad and I tell him I'm ready to go home. I finally talk him into just taking me home. He was oddly quiet for the rest of the drive home, and then as he gets in my house, he proceeds to apologize profusely about it. I heard later from my friend Mark that he said I was a tease. When I told my friend about what happened, he stopped talking to Mike, said that he had heard that he could be kind of a sex maniac. How about a borderline psycho? So guy I went on a creepy first date with, let's never ever meet again. I really want to see other people's reaction to this interaction I had with this guy on Bumble. I'm a 30 year old female and I matched with this guy, 41 male, and we started talking via text and phone for about two weeks before meeting. We had gotten along really well based on texting and phone calls. Finally, we went on an in-person date. We went to a brewery by his house. It was great at first, and the conversation came easily. Then he invited me back to his place to watch a movie, as it was fairly close. One thing of note, I told him previously that I did not want to have sex on the first date, just to avoid the expectation, so I expected to literally watch a movie. When we got to his place, he was immediately touchy and affectionate. I gave him a kiss and we made out for a few seconds before he told me to go into his room. I really regret not speaking up for myself and saying no. It was just an awkward situation for me, so I just went. This is where it gets super weird. During the sex, he was so cringe, saying things like, Who's my princess? And, Whose pussy is this? Like, not yours, dude. I don't know you. He then was saying it was so good that he wasn't going to let me leave. He said it multiple times. He then proceeded to say that he was keeping my underwear. I said no, and he insisted that he was, and there was nothing I could do about it. I literally just wanted to fucking leave. I felt so weird and unsafe, and just gross. I told him I was taking my underwear back, and I did. 
He remained naked for a while, and I got dressed. I told him I needed to go. He got dressed and I left. Does anyone else think that he was absolutely weird and creepy? I have ASD. This means that sometimes I really miss important social cues. Please help me decipher this person's motives. Several years ago on a first date, my date took out a firearm, pointed it at my head, and said, Be careful who you get in cars with. I had no idea what to do. Scream? Run? Stay still? I couldn't believe I missed that he could be an assailant. Worst of all, I zeroed in on the weapon, calmly grabbed the barrel, and monotonely said, I'm going to take this now, and I slowly slid it out of his hand. Thankfully, I didn't get hurt. After I put it away, I got out of the car and left. He rolled down his window, pointed his finger at me in the shape of a weapon, and yelled, Pow, pow! Manically laughed and drove off. Do you think he was playing on this and was too surprised by my reaction to follow through? Or do you think he was generally being a nice guy, trying to teach me a lesson on safety? Perhaps he had a mental issue. What would you have done in this situation? I like your perspectives on this. It happened a decade ago and still haunts and perplexes me to this day. Three to four years ago, I decided to check out Tinder and see what it's all about thinking, what the hell, and that I had nothing to lose. I quickly made a profile. After about an hour or so checking out the app and how to use it, I matched with a guy in my area and we started talking. We spent most of the afternoon exchanging messages and chatting, asking questions, and getting to know each other. By late afternoon he had given me his cell number and we took the messages away from Tinder and started texting. For a few days after that, everything was normal and we were having nice chats almost daily. Naively, I thought this was pretty cool to match with someone so nice that had similar interests on my first go using Tinder. Boy, I was wrong. On the fourth day of us texting back and forth, his tone shifts and he starts asking really odd questions. Some of them sexual, some of them are not. There had been flirting between us and a few double entendres, etc., but nothing like what he was starting to ask. A lot of his questions were really specific sexually. I quickly nipped this in the bud and told him that I was uncomfortable. He apologized for this and accepted how I was feeling. We proceeded from there, albeit a little more cautiously on my part. I didn't have a lot of dating experience at the age of 20, and this was the first time using Tinder or online dating. I thought it was normal behavior. However, I knew not to ignore the odd feeling I had in the pit of my stomach. When he asked me if I would like to meet up for coffee a few days later, I accepted somewhat reluctantly. I knew enough about this sort of stuff to make sure to tell people I was going out, who with, and where I was going, just in case anything happened. After we agreed on a local coffee shop, the tone turned again and he started making all these assumptions. And I had to tell him several times that no, I would not sleep with him straight away. The final straw came when he started texting me saying that we should run away together and that he was going to take me away and we could elope. Just as I'm formulating a text to send back to him in reply to the I want to whisk you away message, my phone pings and I get a message from him telling me that he has rope and duct tape in the back of his car ready for use. I noped out of there real quick. I stopped replying to his messages, blocked him, and reported his profile through Tinder. I wasn't sure what else to do about the situation aside from that, but I made sure that anyone I knew that was using Tinder, that I told them about this guy, and if he came up, they knew not to match with him. So guy with a rope and duct tape in the back of his car, who wants to take a girl away, let's not meet. This goes back to my very first year in college. I was 19. At the time, I had an on and off again girlfriend whom I had just had a fight with. Meanwhile, my best friend at the time, a guy called Matt, had been chatting up this girl named Sarah. 
The thing about Matt was that he was the kind of guy who always had a girlfriend and another lady or two in the works if things didn't work out. The problem was it takes a certain level of instability to be okay with that setup and that attracts a certain level of instability. Anyway, he was chatting up Sarah but at the last minute decided to get back together with his ex. In order to save face, he played it off as him testing her to see if she was right for me. He at no point consulted me about this. Instead, he approached me at lunch and said, Hey, you want to go on a date with Sarah? I responded in the negative, but was informed that that was less of a question and more of an informative statement. We met up and the date goes okay. She's fairly pretty and very nice. We had ice cream and sat around talking. At the end, we exchanged numbers and go our separate ways. Now, I should clarify this college was a very small, private Christian college. Relationships tended to move quickly, and I was fairly inexperienced. That's why I let things go on as long as they did. She texted me that night, and we talked a bit before bed. The next morning, she told me she loved me. I was a bit uncomfortable with this, to say the least. The next day, she made a comment about, If we got married, I should have left. I should have gotten into my car and driven as far as fuck out of there as possible. I didn't. We met that Sunday and went to church together. She held my hand the entire time, and any time I so much as glanced in her direction, she got this big, creepy, serial killer grin on her face. There was something about that look and the feeling I got when I saw it. That was when I realized it was time for me to nope on out. I decided that, regardless of how mental she was, I was going to break up with her properly. I took her to a quiet area on campus where a lounge area had been set up and it made it clear that I was a little concerned about the breakneck pace of this relationship and I thought that it would be best if we distanced ourselves from one another. She asked me if I was breaking up with her. After a little bit of stalling, I said yes. Thus began two months of hell. The next morning, I woke up to a knock on my dorm room door. It was 6 a.m., I opened the door to see her and a couple of her friends. She informed me that they were there to help us talk through our relationship and the issues we were having. I slammed the door in their faces and went back to bed. Not my finest hour, but she was nuts and I was tired. When I woke up, her friends were gone, but she had been sitting outside my door the whole time, not crying, just sitting. She was angry. I walked out into the hallway and she gave me a lecture about how this is not how you should treat your girlfriend. I walked away from her while she was still talking. I was done with this. The next few days, I saw her out of the corner of my eye a few times. Each time, I had a friend confirm that she was actually there. I don't just mean around campus either. That's explainable enough. Other places as well. For example, a friend invited me to his college class at his church. About five minutes later, she strolled in. I don't remember the exact wording that the teacher used, but he clearly indicated that she had never attended this class before. That night, I got a text that read, I saw you make eye contact with me at least twice. I think you want to get back together with me. I spent most of the next few weeks in my room, only leaving for class. My friends would drop off food at my door for meals. She began following them as well. Matt actually told me that Sarah found him playing basketball with some other folks and asked where I was. He told her that he and I were meeting for dinner. She said that she'll join us and sat down on the bench. He reminded her that it was only 2 p.m. and that dinner wasn't at least for four hours. I know, she replied. My grades plummeted. I stopped going to classes for everything short of a test. She knew my schedule. I tried to perhaps dissuade her by getting back together with my on and off again girlfriend. This worked for a time, but Sarah wound up talking to her. They had a chat and Sarah made some thinly veiled threats that made her uncomfortable, so she broke up with me once more. When the semester ended, I was done. My family lived about 700 miles away. I figured this was more than enough distance to keep her at bay. I blocked her on all forms of social media and changed my number. Adam, another friend of mine, he recounted Sarah's actions to me. Apparently, for a time, she dated a guy who had the first name as me. Broadly speaking, he even looked a bit like me. 
She told him to wear glasses because it made him look distinguishable. The fact that they were the same style as mine was, I'm sure, purely coincidental. During this time, her emotional state was erratic, to say the least. She told people that I touched her without her permission and that I broke up with her in a shitty way. Adam also thinks she turned to self-harm as she wore long sleeves in the summer in the deep south. Eventually, she met a guy who was a bit clingy and desperate and willing to accept her quirks. That's the last I heard about her. This has kind of tainted my view of relationships. I used to be sort of clingy and creepy, but this sent me up perhaps a bit too far in the other direction. I'm a bit too detached for a lot of girls now. I also developed a sort of fear of intimacy that I'm slowly getting over. I'm not exaggerating when I say that last year was the first time I hugged a person since the incident in 2010. Edit. I just realized I neglected to mention a key piece of creepiness. She did contact me once I changed my number. I have no idea how she got my new number. And mentioned that she would be willing to come up to see me if I ever wanted to talk. This was shortly before she started dating, totally not me. Nine years ago, I had met a person that to this day, I still wish I never did. I was an isolated, bullied, and depressed 8th grader with the added state of being a plus-size kid in a sports-centric town. So basically, I was beaten and ridiculed on a daily basis. I couldn't make any friends with my new classmates. All my old friends from elementary school got placed in different classes and nobody was in the same after-school groups as me anymore. We also were in a scout group, but that got disbanded before I went to middle school. I was also lonely that if someone talked to me without picking on me, it made me happy. I had a Google Plus account, the only social media I could access at school that I kept hidden from my parents. I would use it to check my favorite fandoms and hopefully use it to make some new friends. One day, I was on Google Plus in the computer lab. I had commented under a piece of fan art of a character I liked. The person who made the post had replied to me not even a minute later. I remember getting very excited seeing that notification, my heart swelling up in excitement. The two of us spent the next 10 minutes of my class talking to each other in the comment section. We ended up replying so much, we flooded a good portion of the comments with our talk. After I had to change classes, I logged back in on one of the Chromebooks we had stored in the back of the class and saw that she actually messaged me. Her name was Haley. At least, she told me that was her name. But years later, I'm not so sure it was her actual name. In the message I got, Haley told me that she was two years older than me and that we had a lot of things in common. I spent the rest of the school day on my phone, not giving a damn to do anything in my classes. We talked for the next week in her DMs until she suggested that we message each other in a private chat room. Later that day, we made a private chat on an online messaging site. We first talked on messages, then Haley asked if we could do a voice call. I told her I wasn't sure, but she told me it was only to better hold a conversation with me. And eventually, after she asked me multiple times, I gave in. After an hour of us talking, she suggested a video chat. I agreed, both to make sure she was actually my age, but also to put a name to the face. Haley turned on the camera and she did look the same age range as me. I don't know why, but that fact haunts me more than anything else. The fact that she looked close to my age, plus that she easily smiled and spoke so friendly to me, made me feel like I had nothing to be afraid of. So that led me quickly to believing I could trust her. We ended up talking for hours after, with me practically on cloud nine the entire time. In the beginning of our little friendship, things were going all right. We told each other about our schools, what we liked, and were gushing over our favorite series. We talked almost every day and stayed up late talking nearly all night. We even exchanged a couple silly pictures of ourselves and memes back and forth a lot. After we had been talking for six months, Haley asked me if I would want to meet her friends. At first, I was ecstatic, 
and the thought of having more friends made me so excited I didn't think twice before saying yes. Haley invited me in and I got to meet her other friends. I had a completely different feeling about these people compared to what I felt for Haley. Something made me feel unsafe in the chat room, even though they all seemed nice and Haley reassured me I could trust them. It felt like my instincts were trying to warn me, but I wasn't sure what about, so I ignored it. Most of them were, um, much older than me. In the chat with their main friends, there were six other people. Most of them were 18 or 19, but there was these two guys I distinctly remember being in their 20s. I asked how they all met, and they told me that they met each other on another social media site or from real life, but wouldn't answer any more of my questions. I was a bit naive, so all of the red flags that were popping up went completely over my head. From constant loud talking to frequent overlapping each other, the calls I were on with them were pure chaos. The messages were even worse because they would frequently drop cuss words and topics that should not be brought up with someone who's still a minor. I tried building a genuine connection with them, but they all act dismissive to me and acted like I was annoying whenever I tried to talk in the conversation. Needless to say, I didn't like them that much. Haley, on the other hand, was all about them. She would pull the same exact habits, jokes, dirty words and all of that with the others. They could say something super problematic, but she would be laughing right along with them. I was shocked by this version of Haley because she never acted like this to me when we were just talking to the two of us. We still talked a bunch, but slowly, she was talking to her other friends more than she was talking to me. At first, I thought I was fine, but the more she ignored my messages or didn't pick up my calls, the more I got bothered. When I called to confront Haley about blowing me off, she went ballistic on me, saying that I was being selfish and that I didn't want her to talk to her other friends because I was jealous. I explained that wasn't true but she wouldn't listen and then hung up on me. Haley then ghosted me for almost a month, leaving me worried and upset over what happened. When she started talking to me again, I was so emotionally distraught. I was crying on our first call and apologizing for what I said the last time we talked. She told me it was fine, she just needed some time alone and that she would talk to me a bit more. And indeed she did, although... Not what I thought she would. Haley began to tell me she had depression, and that's the reason why she wouldn't talk to me for a month. I didn't judge her about it, and said whatever she needed to talk about, she could come to me. This led to her trauma dumping on me nearly every day, talking about how shitty her home life was, how bad her relationship with her mom, and how much she hated herself. I was there to offer her an ear and some kind words whenever Haley called or messaged me about it. This quickly became part of our routine. Almost daily, in the middle of us having any kind of conversation, she would begin complaining about anything that happened during the day. If not that, it would go on about how ugly she thought she was, or how much her life sucked and wanted things to end. That last one freaked me out the most. I was worried about her because we lived in different states. I couldn't help her in person. Every time she would become self-deprecating, I would say otherwise, giving her compliments and words of affirmation for so long that my throat ached and felt raw. And then, just as fast as she would bring it up, she dropped that conversation and we would talk like before. Haley also began calling me for long periods of time and messaging me late into the night. Phone calls would stretch on for hours at a time and her text would come in until 3 or 4 in the morning. The thing was, it was mainly her talking now. Every phone call, she'd take over the conversation. If I didn't message her back quickly enough, she'd spam multiple texts back to back faster than I could read them. I would try to end them myself, but every time I would try, Haley would chastise me for wanting to leave our conversation, when not too long ago, I wanted to have her attention. She basically guilt tripped me back into talking to her, and it worked. Even if I had lost interest in our talks or didn't want her to message me during class, I would still let her talk and reply. At least, I still had her attention, 
and she still wanted to talk to me. This all went on in a cycle of for two years, and it left me feeling more anxious and exhausted than anything else I ever did. I felt like we had nothing in common anymore, and she either ghosts me for a week or spends the entire weekend texting me nonstop. The topics of her self-worth having also gotten worse. They escalated to her messaging me, Goodbye. Or, I can't live like this anymore. Without responding to any of my following messages or calls. Alongside of that, she would send me a picture of her marking herself, telling me about how it felt to do it. The sight of those messages would send me into a panic attack, and every time I would panic and message her after, I would be sent into tears. Not only that, the group chat with her friends got worse. Arguments broke out frequently, drama and gossip spread like an oil spill, and it led to people being blocked, unblocked almost every few days. I hated talking to them. They began ganging up on me in the messages, and Haley was often the first one to make rude jokes about me that they would all laugh at. I began getting sick of it and would stop messaging and calling both Haley and her friends, despite her begging me to. One night, while the group was in an argument over text, I hit my breaking point. I was tired of all the drama and them treating me like shit all the time. So I messaged the group chat telling them that I had enough of them and privately messaged Haley that I needed a break. Then I left both chat rooms, blocked everyone I talked to, deleted my message account, and deleted the site from my computer history. Once it was all over, I felt like I was freed from some kind of prison and all I could do was cry in relief and euphoria over the whole thing being over. I later found out that all the pictures Haley had sent to me were stock images and photoshopped. I also found out from a little bit of digging through her background, a lot of things didn't add up. I learned that she was actually a lot older than what she originally told me, at least six years older than me, meaning that the first time when we met, she was about to be 20 years old. Many things from our interactions still haunt me, especially the picture of her marks and her self-hating messages. For almost three months, I would have nightmares about Haley getting back in contact with me and what she would say and do to me. I have many better friends now, and I'm absolutely certain I will never hear from Haley again. But sometimes, I still wonder who that woman really was and what it was about me that she was interested in. Hopefully, I'll never find out. So Haley... If you somehow ever find this story, let's not meet again.